Uh, I guess uh, we're ready for the first question, if that's okay. Yes, uh, I would like to direct the first question to Mr. Parshuraman. Uh, uh, could you tell us how your company has benefited as a result of including women in decision making, especially the important decisions? Yeah, uh, thanks a lot. I think uh, we are engaged uh, in the automobile business. Basically, we make uh, the cars is one plant of Toyota. And uh, we are the transmission and the engine plant. I look after the engine plant of Toyota Industries. We uh, make these engines and, you know, these engines power the Fortuner and Innova for the engine market. And we also export these engines to Toyota Motor Thailand. From there, it is uh, shipped to Russia, Australia, and New Zealand the global markets. So uh, in manufacturing, of course, uh, uh, we have employed a lot of women in our office space. But uh, in India, the manufacturing still, uh, because of the shifts and other challenges, and there were some night shift restrictions when the government now it is eased out a little bit. Uh, but in the other destinations, like our plants in Philippines, Thailand, uh, we have a lot of uh, women force in uh, the manufacturing mm -hmm. operations. And uh, especially in terms of the leadership, in fact, uh, we have found them outstanding in our office area, the human resources, the administration, and I think the IT space, and the finance, I think, and the production control, I think they're outstanding, I would say, because a few uh, mm -hmm. points that I can think of is their compassion and their passion for the job, and uh, very observant. In fact, uh, they have a very, very sharp uh, uh, observation skills, which we have uh, realized. And uh, they're able to interact uh, with the office people, the manufacturing uh, members. In fact, uh, we were very surprised. They're able to get a lot of uh, final information, which uh, even our HR managers could not get, uh, which means uh, their connect is something amazing. Uh, therefore, I think uh, I fully feel that uh, we should expand this even to the manufacturing areas. And definitely, they are very participative in nature. In fact, in the diversity point of view, I think some of the ideas that they give are something outstanding. Uh, in fact, in our AP office in Thailand, uh, I would say that almost 40-50% is uh, women. And uh, they are in any field, right from engineering, design, you know, in the marketing, in the service sector. Therefore, uh, I think uh, the number is going to increase from now on. And uh, I think uh, post-COVID, I think the participation would uh, increase in leaps and bounds. And uh, I think the manufacturing sector would uh, largely get a strategic advantage. Especially in India, we have uh, seen uh, women uh, employed largely in the assembly shops. In fact, uh, many of the plants I've seen, uh, their uh, eye for uh, details are something fantastic. They're able to catch uh, minor abnormalities. I think uh, this is uh, one thing that uh, we have seen, especially in the final testing, final inspection, and uh, especially seal inspection, they're something fantastic. Not only from the leadership perspective, I think they're too good in the active working also. One thing that leadership comes to them naturally because they are already the CEOs of the house, which means uh, they're managing the home. Like, a, you know, they keep the house in such a perfect order. And uh, literally, I think that uh, kind of foundation is there. So once they're able to come to the work, I think they're able to reflect the uh, kind of a true DNA. So I feel the potential is unlimited, but still uh, we have a huge, huge potential untapped. I only think that uh, definitely going forward, the number should increase and contribute to the manufacturing and other sectors as well. So, so if I can jump in, in terms of uh, India, so if you see the, the engineering, we are the one of the, the highest number of producing highest number of engineers every year. And yeah. a lot of them are, a lot of them are women. You have, you see the electrical, mechanical, civil. Yeah. Uh, you see that this transformation is happening, uh, that a lot of them ended up in doing some IT job. Uh, so most, the majority of them, because potentially, uh, I think the opportunities are more, or even the passion, passion behind the uh, gaining the degrees. 
it's not um, not something or, or the, the opportunities are lost Some, something is missing so what do you suggest or what is your observation in this space see i think uh, it's a kind of a mindset i would say in fact uh, what is uh, been happening in the indian typical society i think uh, always the parents mentor them as you know you should take soft jobs and uh, you should you know after uh, education i would like to get you married i think this is a very very wrong mindset in fact uh, once you open that kind of a challenge to them i think give them the equal participation and definitely i think uh, they are outstanding and they can reach any kind of job any kind of destination i think uh, this i can see that in fact uh, my daughter uh, who works in uh, google alphabet she works in a driverless car i think uh, i found her outstanding even compared to the uh, kind of her peer male students i think uh, probably we are never put any kind of condition and uh, you know uh, it's nothing like uh, you know girl child or you know i think the mindset is extremely extremely strong in the society because the uh, parents mm-hmm. think that you know the girls should uh, study then they should get married they should settle down they should take easier jobs so nevertheless the society is changing now but uh, I'm, i'm feeling very sorry to see still this kind of mindset especially in rural india and even in uh, many of the conventional societies i think this has been the challenge so i think it's very important that we should break this mindset and you know they are not restricted to any kind of a specific field of course there are some challenges which we need to address and uh, you know give some countermeasures but i think uh, the boundary is unlimited today i think it's untapped the potential is something very huge so if you may ask some uh, uh, okay uh, the direct question in terms of so we have an opportunity to because the gpt and the fedinot company so we have an opportunity to get women in the board rooms uh, is it and against the men so what what is the uh, uh what is the criteria you think because you mentioned there is a high to detail in in your observation of engineering engineering and so apart from that in terms of leadership skills and uh, getting them on the board rooms making the decision making so what do you think uh, the gap is or do you think that they're already at the mark you see uh, still there is a misconceived conception uh, in the corporates that uh, women don't take the risk see they are very passionate compassionate and the team working capabilities i think uh, they can moderate things so fantastically in fact i have seen them in uh, many of the union meetings whenever i have involved uh, you know the uh, uh, the women employees i think they did a fantastic job and the whole uh, podium is set in a perfect balance whereas uh, in their absence we find a big difference in many of such meetings and therefore what is missing is the perceived conception that you know uh, they can't take the kind of risk they cannot stretch beyond a particular point and they put themselves to a particular uh, limit i think uh, i feel this is a wrongly uh, misconceived concept and in fact uh, it is very very important that the diversity is very important in the board rooms and the points uh, of uh, decision making uh, because uh, today many decisions go biased in their absence i think going forward even a country like india i think even in the political leadership or be the corporate leadership mm-hmm. or uh, in the rural administration i think uh, the women participation is extremely extremely important so i don't think uh, they lack any specific traits be it uh, the communication the teamwork the kind of uh, motivation capabilities the leadership capabilities the networking capabilities i think uh, they are outstanding what is uh, been uh, perceived is only the risk taking ability which i don't agree i think uh, it is again a mindset and i think it's uh, very important that organization should uh, give enough opportunities and uh, provide uh, sufficient exposures to overcome this kind of a challenge still i feel it's a largely a misconception we have seen ex- excellent performance by the women leadership be it in the indian corporates who name uh, today they have done a fantastic job and uh, be the global or india i think we can give hundreds of examples 
therefore i think it is mindset how to break it is the key challenge excellent thank you for that so uh we will move on to the question number 2 we have for deepika uh so i split the question into two parts that's okay so deepika do you think that organizations are genuinely interested in elevating women in their organization to the highest levels in your observations or because you've been in touch with a lot of women you're interacting in the forums etc and uh, the the second part of the question is can you raise the importance of empathy and compassionate leadership and uh, how the women and men in terms of uh, compassionate leadership and empathy who you see uh, more demonstrative in these skills deepika oh please so thank you karan uh, that's a very very interesting uh, question and uh, very very close to my heart because my entire work revolves around uh, women leadership um coming to the first part of it are organizations uh wanting to do their bit and are doing their bit in terms of bringing in more women into leadership yes i think organizations are doing their bit in terms of bridging gender gaps in in senior leadership um and um there is definitely a positive push from organizations to enable women to to move up the corporate ladder to move up the leadership ladder um yes there are challenges and there are certain challenges unique to women and uh, but but we're in the process of overcoming those uh, challenges we we're making a gradual but very very formative steps towards uh, overcoming challenges but um Uh, having said that a lot still needs to be worked upon um but um uh, you know where i see one big challenge where uh, where you i actually had an organizational intent of giving that push to women in leadership and uh you know what came out of it was uh, in a in a very very huge uh, healthcare organization i uh, happened to be uh, conducting a session and uh, the hr walked up to me and said that just need your little bit of uh, inputs in in something that i want to share with you and i said sure so he said uh, you know we had an internal job posting for the next step towards leadership and uh, we had uh, two internal candidates that you know we thought were absolutely at par in terms of deliverables in terms of productivity in terms of uh, taking the leap forward but obviously there was one single position and uh, so so uh, we asked them both to apply now both of them applied and uh, when it came to their formal interaction with the hr in terms of you know uh, discussing their entire position and what lies ahead in walks in the man and he has a a, a great action plan in terms of what he's achieved so far where is he kind of brought value to so far what does he today bring to the table and what's going to be the way ahead and that entire you know uh, succession plan the uh, progress planning or future planning is in place and brings it bang on to the table in walks in the woman uh, which who was perceived to be probably more credible and uh, you know uh, so so the first thing she walks in and says is that um, do you really think i'm ready for this what made you identify me as being one of the potential uh, persons to take it forward um can i can i get back to you on it uh, can i kind of check with of course so um, the point that i'm trying to make here is that yes women come with um you know if we say that uh, we have basket full of responsibilities and roles to play i think women just have their baskets um, overflowing and outpouring that's that's a given fact but um somewhere uh, they're not able to kind of uh, give them their due uh, in terms of embracing what what organizations have in store for them so i think that that sense of self belief that sense of self confidence that sense of taking that plunge and then of course working backwards how to make things happen is a mindset that we need to incorporate in women in terms of uh, what organizations have in store for them and trust you me organizations are doing their bit in terms of offering 
uh, relatively equal opportunities. It is on to us now to latch on to those opportunities that come our way and make the most of it. Uh, and the first obstacle being uh, self-doubt and, and that little bit of hesitation and underplaying ourselves. Once that is sorted, nothing can stop us uh, moving forward. Coming to the second part of your question, which was on empathetic, on compassionate leadership, leadership I think uh, God has made us that way, where a woman is perceived to be and is inherently more nurturing. Uh, there is a lot of logical thinking that happens, uh, though we hugely underplay that. There is huge loads of compassion and nurturing that are a part of our DNA. And uh, what I observe is that um, the, the world, the corporate world perceives us and sees us only from an angle of that soft, nurturing, compassionate part of it. It does not, and probably we've not done our bit in terms of making them reckon the fact that we are a great balance of both. And as needed, as required, we can bring those skills into play and, and fit the jigsaw uh, uh, beautifully. So uh, compassionate leadership, of course, has been a part of a woman's DNA. It's been there for men as well, but probably, as I said, since we come from a nurturing uh, you know, genetic makeup, uh, there is a natural inclination of us managing things in, in uh, a more humane manner, in a more holistic manner. And uh, yeah, it, and it's time time that we play that to our advantage and you know, kind of bring that skill forward for the world to experience. And uh, the world of late has been experiencing given the pandemic. You see wherever there have been women leaders uh, and uh, you know, they've, they've been fabulously managing uh, the scenario of the pandemic as well. So a lot, as I said, is out there uh, ready to be grabbed and a lot has to be an inside out job in terms of us women uh, looking in for leadership. And uh, thank you Deepika for that. So I was just doing a little bit of, uh, no, uh, just uh, looking at the statistics. So if you see the Fortune 100 companies in the 2018-19, so you have the 5% of women are in like so CEOs and CFOs in the leadership roles. But by the end of 2019, so you have one third of them has dropped out, you know, which is sad. So there could be any reason, different, different reasons. So we don't know the reasons behind it. So to start with the percentage is less and, and then there is the discontinuity in the leadership roles. So what could, what do you think that women are facing uh, issues uh, which, which lead to happen uh, the lesser percentage? Valid, very, very valid question yet again, Kiran, thank you for that. Um, yes, uh, if you see the statistics, you know, uh, as much as we take pride in, you know, kind of giving equal opportunities for women uh, and, and starting off at a relatively uh, equal uh, ratio as the the ladder we, as we climb up it tapers down it funnels down to that mere little five percent that you just spoke about um, uh, and uh, and further dropouts from there now uh, one big factor that comes into my mind uh, as I hear this uh, input from your end is that you know a lot of us believe that there is a glass ceiling and uh, trust you me um, if you've reached a certain level in leadership, you've already shattered that glass ceiling that exists, right? But what lies beyond, and then we kind of come into a very happy space that, okay, we've shattered the glass ceiling, we've climbed up that notch and moved that notch forward. But what we also are in store for, and which just an observation has been exclusively for women uh, and women leaders is something called the glass cliff, right? And most of us, uh, are not ready for that glass cliff. We haven't got enough women or men mentors to enable us segue further on from there. And uh, also the fact that uh, we are notoriously known for being too harsh on ourselves and constantly being wanting to prove ourselves and, and prove ourselves right all the time, right? Um, I think we've got to ease out on our own selves first. Uh, you know, I think Indra Nui once mentioned that you cannot have it all, right? Um, and you cannot have it all in the sense that you cannot control it all, but you can manage a lot of it. You, we, we're bad at asking for help. We're bad at delegating work. 
we're bad at saying that, okay, I don't know something and I want to know uh, about it or reaching out for help. We somewhere kind of uh, come across and want to prove a point as a superwoman that I can handle it all, I can manage it all, I may be crumbling inside. So I think times like now where we are in a far more open forum, a far more open society, a far more open scenario uh, is one is communication. Second is not being too harsh on yourself. Third is having or building while on your way up, building that support system for your own self where you learn, you develop, you nurture your own self. Of course, organizations will kind of uh, you know, uh, give you a helping hand there and support there. But are you really seriously interested in investing in yourself and investing in your growth? These are a few aspects that if one looks into, we definitely can head for a better percentage. Uh, yes, we're still, as per the World Economic Forum, we're still about 108 years far away from 100% equality, but we can make a difference uh, even now. Uh, Deepika, some of the... Um characteristics you mentioned in terms of you know compassion and nurturing a lot of times that tends to lead women into very stereotypical kind of roles so and this was true a few generations ago where you know a woman in a corporate uh, sector is generally in HR because that's a, a nurturing role you would not see a woman in a more um, masculine um, quote unquote uh, role where you need to take harsh decisions you need to take uh, decisions per se, not just harsh decisions. Um, those were the more um, reserved for the men, so to speak. Uh, that has come down to a very large extent, but we still see that uh, you know segregation in terms of what role you play in the organization. How do you see that coming together and you know that becoming gender neutral and more about attributes rather than gender? Lovely question. Thanks, Uma. Um, See, let's, let's deep dive a little bit more. Let's start from defining leadership. Leadership itself has been defined in a very masculine manner. You know, you've got to be aggressive. You've got to be bossy. You've got to, you know, that, that the word boss itself has a very, very masculine uh, aura to it. So we've got to somewhere, you know, start redefining the very uh, definition of leadership. We've got to bring in neutrality there and then carry forward the neutrality further as well. So um, the nurturing part of it and all of that is great, but nurturing is equally needed in a marketing and a sales scenario, in a, uh, you know, in a boardroom scenario, in whatever aspect in life. And so is, is management, you know, like uh, Mr. Parshuraman said that we're CEOs of the house, we manage the entire ecosystem so well. So we are, you know, ask the men around in the household, you know, um, they, you know, you would, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't think it, they're going to hesitate in mentioning the leadership skills that we have when it comes to um, putting a point across, getting the work done. So when we can get it done in, in our immediate ecosystem, uh, why is it not out there in a corporate ecosystem? Is because of those predetermined, predefined uh, definitions of uh, and perceptions of leadership, roles, managements, and all of that. Once we open our mindset more on that, make it more neutral, um, that's where we will see uh, a difference coming in, a change coming in. Thanks, Deepika. That was very insightful. And I'd like to carry this on to Vikas. We're talking about the softer attributes. We've spoken about uh, empathy. We've spoken about nurturing. If we can talk about creating that, that again is considered a softer attribute. How would you rate creativity in women-led organizations as opposed to men-led organizations? And uh, th this question is actually two parts. So one is, you know, how, what difference would you see in terms of creativity? And the second question would be, how do we encourage upcoming women leaders to, to go out, exhibit that the soft skills matter and, you know, in, in, in leadership, as mentors, as mentees, how can we bring about that kind of ecosystem where it's okay to exhibit the softer skills? No, absolutely, Uman. I think some great points there from Deepika and Mr. Parsuraman as well. I think the, uh, in the creative space itself, I think historically there have been women always been there. And I think it's been proven by research as well that a diverse team can come up with much better ideas, can come up with much better 
our sort of you know creative thoughts and that's not just women i think it's obviously a diverse team itself be from different cultures be a different facets of life uh, and i think the women obviously they are very very huge role in that for our team as well we we are very happy to have a 55% uh, women uh, team including in our leadership in fact our leadership is 57% women and i think you know we have people in technology as well uh, across teams that we have women so i think while creativity has obviously been an area where women have continued to contribute i think that spreads across and i think it comes down to how you run your sort of talent acquisition how do you want to do that because yes we are in a creative space and hence it's easy to have women uh, join us but i think we've consciously also worked towards it and i think that's how that percentage will go up if if entrepreneurs and the talent acquisition teams actually actively make sure there is a diverse team and that they have goals to go after that in terms of the second part i think you know in fact there's a amazing research on in fact google did some research to figure out why do women not succeed uh you know in in the workplace and they realized actually what deepika was saying that they actually don't have that confidence right they don't have uh they've always been told not to talk about their achievements uh, at least back in the day back 30 40 50 years ago and i think that's obviously changed a lot but somewhere that that glass ceiling still exists so in fact uh, we are actually part of the campaign that they started which is called i am remarkable which is a campaign to help women believe in their potential and actually come out and talk about it and consciously assert themselves that saying i am amazing i am remarkable and i have been able to achieve this at my workplace and and also encourage them to actually go to their bosses go to their leaders go to the managers and say hey why am i being paid less why am i not being appreciated why am i not moving up the ladder and actually encourage them to have that voice in that workplace so it's an amazing initiative that uh, some googlers started and we've quite happy to be part of that and i think they've almost trained about 120000 women till date including at our company and it's a it's a program that anyone can be part of so whoever is out there listening feel free to reach out to them and be part of that and i think it's i think it's initiatives like that that bring out that confidence in women that can really make that change and make that shift happen um so just to reiterate the campaign you were talking about is called i am remarkable right yes all right yes. cool thanks awesome vikas i think if i can uh, jump in so when when i was growing up or most of us uh, so when when someone asked you to picture in your mind a leader the first so you probably you know 70 80% you get men rather than women so it's that historically uh, in society we have seen as a leader more men than women so in terms of uh, uh, talk about corporate corporates or talk about pol- politics so although they are fantastic uh, women did really well in terms of leading the countries uh, across the world um, but still significantly even in the corporate world so you see uh the little number of uh, is it do you think because even uh, we we all know that the in terms of persistence perseverance uh, abilities and uh, knowledge the women are no less than men no doubt about it uh but still of course we addressed on the conference levels we addressed on uh, uh in terms of the how the parents see restrictions parents put on women etc so in in your view uh like because you're building an organization and you you've been successful and you have 60 around 60% of women working for you so if we had a chance or opportunity so to give more women to come up so what what would you do differently yeah i think you don't know i think you know deepika actually touched a bit upon that i think and and mr parthiraman as well indeed that the mindset that exists in the society is what needs to change right because that that entire male patriarchy strong culture and maybe controversial to say it out loud but that exists and that's you can see that in the in the office you can see that in the boardroom you can see that in interactions that we have with clients in fact you see that even in advertising in fact another research in advertising shows that men are actually shown to speak in advertisements two times more than women even though women 
you know, you, you would expect that women should be shown more in advertisements and it would attract people, but actually that's not the case because the people who decide those, ad, those advertisements, people who decide those scripts do not want that, right? And so that's historically been the case and that still exists. This is a recent research that was done in 2018, right? So it, it starts with that mind shift, mind, mindset change, shifting that, that, that's really what I think is key. And I think it's not easy to do that. It, it, it boils down actually, in my view, to that ego that exists in that person to say that, you know, should I, should I let a woman be my boss? And if you ask men this question, uh, unfortunately, you'll get the answer that maybe the answer is no, right? And I think that's really where a lot of that stems from. And that comes down to the kind of education, comes down to the balance. In fact, there are a lot of communication that, that brands are now trying to show how men and women need to be treated equal, mm. even down to the household where a glass of milk, you want to give the whole glass of milk to both children. You don't want to give half glass to the girl and full glass to the boy. But unfortunately, that's still the reality of life in India. And that's, that's the mindset you need to shift. So it needs to start from there all the way to the boardroom. And, and that's the shift that that's not easy to make, but that's what will help make the difference. Awesome. So I mean, uh, in, in maybe years time, we'll see uh, some leading decisions will be taken by women in, in your company. Hopefully, because you're you're uh, in favor of uh, helping uh, women who has got the skills to bring them up. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thanks for everybody. Yes. If I move on to uh, this is Kavita Rao, the question all about uh, your own journey, uh, Kavita, in terms of as a female leader, what has been the most significant barrier uh, you had in your career and how did you overcome it? Kavita, can you hear us? Yeah, you're on mute, I guess, Kavita, you're on mute. It says the host has muted me. <laughs> so uh, your question is, is how did I overcome it? Um, well, in most uh, challenges have not been very overt. Uh, there is a very fragile process um, in oneself seeing themselves as a leader and get others to see you as a leader as well. So I have been in um, a senior leadership role for quite some time right now. And uh, the challenges have largely been either uh, systemic or cultural. Um, what, I, and I'll just give you you know, two such examples, because this is down the memory lane as well, Kiran, and thanks for that. <clears throat> the, the first systemic barrier for me was uh, very early uh, in my path to leadership. I, and for many people who are listening right now, I would say learn to play the game very quickly. Uh, what do I mean by that is um, uh, there is, um, you know, a subtle game that men play and I don't think they do it very consciously. It's just part of their DNA. It happens naturally for them. But I um, uh, learned that there is a certain game that they play. And what do they do? One, they try and garner support for their critical meeting even before the meeting has started. Um, posturing is one of it. Um, confidently making a mistake um, or sometimes even delegating very well are some of the things that I've seen uh, very, uh, them do. So one of the things is learn to play the game very well in the ecosystem that you are in. So that's uh, the systemic barrier. When it comes to cultural uh, part of it, there are, um, I think uh, Vikas has touched upon it and so has uh, Parshurama. So uh, the number of roles that we automatically take on, we juggle a number of hats at a given point in time. We've been taking a lot of pride in it as well, saying that uh, we are multitaskers. Um, in, in my world, uh, Kiran, which is into corporate and consulting world, the gender gap has been narrowing significantly over the last five to seven years. Um, now, uh, if you see traditionally, I'd uh, like what Vikas said, 
uh, men have been taking on a primary role. And even to this day, if you see 70% of all what they do largely revolves around those primary role. But women uh, evolutionary had a primary role in the last 50 uh, to 60 years. They've taken on a completely new role without letting go of their existing primary role. So which practically means that they are doing two big roles and all the associated uh, ones. But uh, I think that's uh, been a barrier. And in, in my opinion, I think that has been one of the uh, biggest advantages as well for women. That's what has actually led us to be a much more tougher, uh, you know, agile uh, machines right now. Uh, uh, the, the fact that the, and very strangely, women tread a very fine line where, uh, at a senior leadership level, the expectations would be from two complete opposite sides. On one side, you need to be the lean, mean machine. On the other side, the nurturing, um, you know, caretaker as well. But I think uh, uh, they have just taken it in their stride. It, how well have they taken it in their strides? Leave companies aside, Kiran. Just look at countries. Countries led by yeah. women are doing far better in several indexes than by men. I think men have to do a little catching up. Very soon we'll be doing a topic, uh, men in leadership. <laughs> All right, I like that. So um, I, I guess most of the women possibly, whether we agree it or not, the <laughs> women takes a lot of responsibility in the family families and the, the children, et cetera, as traditionally. But do you think that, uh, although we have the, the help more advanced now in terms of we have the uh, daycare centers open uh, and a lot of support system where you can have a maid looking after your kids at home, or uh, you can have this um, kind of balance towards the working life. But still, I think it down, comes down to a lot of responsibility on women in terms of looking after the family. So how do you think that uh, has uh, over the years, or what do you see in next five to 10 years? Do you think th this balance is going to get better and so that the women who are brilliant, who will, who are um, pretty much confident in terms of leading the companies, they can come forward and uh, they can uh, find a solution on this? Um, Kiran, honestly, uh, I don't think this is a competition between men or men and women. It is not. The very fact that we have reached where we are, kudos to all the men who are uh, behind this. I've worked with, uh, you know, a number of uh, men, my bosses, my reportees in my path to leadership, where they are uh, completely uh, willing to let me take the limelight and I'm willing to share the limelight when it's required. So it's not a competition. Having said that, um, I guess uh, the work is not on cosmetic level of uh, putting, uh, talking of diversity, trying to hire more women. That's all at the peripheral level. What needs to be done is probably a little more deep seated um, um, and in line with, uh, with what Vikas had also mentioned. Uh, we probably need to get down culturally and uh, differentiate of how uh, we are actually raising our children. If you look at, and on a completely different note, if you see uh, the crimes against women, when we talk of that, we act, what we are saying is, uh, we are saying, um, you know, parents see how you are raising your boys. We are not talking of uh, women out there. And that responsibility is also given largely to the uh, women. So, um, you know, uh, uh, in the next few years, I think uh, uh, as, as, a, as a culture, we have gotten a lot more open. We are bringing out issues. We are speaking about it. There are a lot of women, uh, men who are standing, uh, you know, in complete support. In fact, um, I would say they are giving their 200% to make sure that this happens. So um, I'm not even saying uh, five years. I, I would say you things are uh, changing by the night. So in the next 18 months to 24 months, I think the statistics sure. can startle us. Kiran, pardon me. This is Sridhar from Titan. I want to push in a question here. Can I do that? Uh, sir, 
I think the idea is we, we left uh, LinkedIn uh, question forum and we received questions and shortlisted apologies. We are not, but because you came in, I think I have to respect that. Just this, just for you, we'll do it. But otherwise, we shortlisted a few questions and we're going to do that later. I just I sent in a couple of questions on LinkedIn. Uh, this could be uh, a point which anyone can respond. I know it's a little loaded. I think one of the important mm -hmm. challenges uh, which I have seen increasingly has been uh, inability to distinguish between gender bias and gender sensitivity. And uh, unfortunately, I'm seeing it more in women. Yes. And therefore, yes. this is inhibiting actually the younger women or the women who are probably below the ranks to even come up in leadership position. I want to comment and specifically this to Kavita and Deepika. This is something which I've seen increasingly. And as a part of this, Kavita, I heard you say that, you know, men allow women to take the spotlight. It's a very, very loaded statement. Actually, you know, it's the difference between powering and empowering. I think empowerment is taken and power is given. So your views on this, Kavita and Deepika, both of you. Thank you so much for allowing me to ask this question. Thank you so much. I'd like to take the lead here to answer that uh, for you. I think it's a beautiful fact that you came, brought forward because, um, see, Again, it has, you know, um, if we, it's got to do with a little more deep dive into the entire uh, foundations, right? We've always heard, and thanks for pointing that out, we've always heard, th heard that women step on each other's toes to climb up the ladder, right? Because somewhere the ladder appears to be so masculine that you've really got to kind of nudge your way out and, and you know, kind of become a man to, to climb it up. But now things are changing. Now, uh, you know, let's take the, the, the uh, you know, uh, the work that uh, my organization does. Uh, we, we built a platform called Corporate Diva, which essentially is um, a building women leader platform wherein you give them that space of being the woman that they are and they together nurture, build and make space for each other to climb up the ladder uh, collectively. So that is something which is, uh, one is the need of the hour. Second is, right, like Kavita said, and even Vikas pointed that out, that, you know, um, sensitizing your boys when you're bringing them up. Uh, we've, I mean, uh, I've seen even my own community for that matter. One notices that, okay, you know, agar garam roti aye, garam roti is given to the boy first and the, the roti on the table is passed on to, to around people. But I think that's where we women uh, have to play that torchbearer, that uh, role of making things uh, neutral, starting from the household, raising boys as an equal part of the household. Uh, you know, Kiran mentioned that, you know, uh, daycares and support systems and all of that. That may, I would look that as, as secondary. Primary is, are we building that support system within? Are we treating things and people equally within? Am I raising my boy as equal as I'm raising my girl? And um, taking those steps forward is probably some which is more valid, more important. Uh, you know, like in, in our household, uh, my 13 year old son probably makes the best tea out of all of us. And my daughter is the one who would take on, uh, you know, we have a chat every now and then she wants to join the armed forces and she's still very this thing about uh, why isn't it open for women, uh, the infantry part of it. So if those are the conversations where we are having where uh, being in the infantry is not taken as a boy thing and making a cup of tea is not taken as a girl thing, but it's taken as a household as an ecosystem thing. Uh, that's from where we will have to build up and that's from where we will have to uh, kind of drill in neutrality, drill in equality uh, and not make equality an issue to be spoken about. It has to be something which is natural that should come to all of us. Uh, Kavita, mm -hmm. please take that forward. I know you have thoughts on it as well. Thank you, Deepika. And um, thank you, uh, Sridhar, for raising that point. Gender bias is a cultural aspect and gender sensitivity can be achieved through a systematic, uh, you know, ingraining it uh, across all levels. Um, uh, now, uh, gender sensitivity, as you had uh, said, the very fact that we are having forums like this is because there is um, a willingness across all levels for us to be able to even speak about it. This bias is something that, um, you know, um, 
it, it's already started to diminish in the urban areas. And in fact, if you start looking at how hiring is happening in uh, corporates, you find a lot of women coming from the B and C town uh, of late, at least in the last five to seven years statistics, um, HR will be able to tell you that the number of um, uh, women coming in from B and C town is, uh, uh, is a lot higher from, uh, you know, uh, in, into workforce. And I'm not talking of roads like HR, et cetera. I'm talking of field jobs, market, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, representatives uh, in the pharma industry those kind of roles is where women are taking over. So I think it's, we have started changing and I'd like to be an optimist out here, Sridhar, and say that, give it some time. You've seen the change in your houses. It's, it's, it'll, it is percolating to, a, you know, we are nothing, our houses are nothing but a microcosm and of a bigger macrocosm. So uh, wow. it is changing is what I would say. Thank you for the insights, Kavita. I guess, Uma, we have a couple of questions from the, the comments. We give opportunity for the participants. So from the LinkedIn. So if we can uh, spell out the name of the person who raised the question, and if you can shoot out, please. It's an open question, by the way, for the panelists. Any one of you can take it. Uma, over to you. Sure. Um, so this question is a slight, um, I've edited the question that was raised by Himani, Himani Topal. Um, so the question is, what steps can we take to promote women leaders in sectors that are traditionally male-oriented? Male and Mr. Parshuraman spoke about the manufacturing sector. There are even uh, the IT services, for example, is very traditionally male-oriented. What can we do to encourage women to not just join these sectors, but grow within these sectors? I think... Uh... Can I answer? Yes, sir, please. Yeah, I think uh, one uh, most important thing is uh, mentoring and role modeling. I think uh, even from the childhood days, I think uh, even uh, people benchmark uh, great uh, heroes. I think uh, it is very important that uh, we should have uh, that kind of uh, women leader benchmarking even to the children. Even in the offices, I think this mentoring is very, very important. Uh, mentoring means, uh, you know, we have seen in the private organizations, family-owned organizations, this human leadership has been fantastic. In fact, they're able to produce miraculous results. Why? Because they are given the empowerment. There is no fear of failure. In fact, another example uh, was our late uh, Prime Minister Indira Gandhi ji. She ruled India for 18 years. One of the greatest uh, leaderships you can think of in terms of her boldness, in terms of that decision making, the leadership she has shown, whatever it is, I think uh, we have that kind of a capability, which means I believe that uh, the fear factor should be broken. It should be overcome. And I think organizations should uh, you know, give that kind of ecosystem and uh, mentoring system. The second point I always thought that, uh, rightly said by the other panelists, yeah, women would al always love to be very a perfectionist. You know, if you get 100 out of 100, then only they get into. Even I checked up with my own wife. Uh, you know, she always looks at perfection. Whereas uh, we are uh, Chalta is 70% okay. You know, I think this is uh, something phenomenal factor. I think once you cross the threshold level, I think you can see the whole world in front of you. I think how to take them to the threshold level and liberate them at that point. I think it's very important, uh, right from the mentoring, from the upbringing of uh, parents, I think how the society is giving them the opportunity. I think once you take them to that level, I think the whole world is theirs. You know, they see a completely new world. So the second thing is the fear factor should be taken out. And uh, thirdly, I think uh, organization should also have uh, definitely a percentage of uh, women leadership as a mandatory, which means uh, even I would not be surprised that government of India should pass a rule like 50%, mm -hmm. it should be or 40%, 50%. Ultimately, there should be an equal participation by both the genders. I think uh, this would uh, really throw open a new sets of opportunities. I feel uh, these three things are very important. Mentoring, providing the opportunity, and uh, breaking the mindset. I, I actually um, 
completely think uh, Mr. Parshram nailed it when he said uh, perfectionism. I think perfectionism has been the bane for a lot of women. Uh, we try to be very good at uh, all of what we do. Uh, that taken care in you know, one of the biggest thing, advantages in the virtual world that we live right now uh, can open huge possibility for women because your six foot two inches, your baritone voice, all of that no longer matter. What Absolutely. value do you add as an individual to the cause is what matters. Your power, your aggression in a virtual world is not as important. So this has uh, actually created a level playing field for all of us. And uh, I think uh, right now the effects of it is something that we will get to bear fruits maybe in, in the times to come. Thank you. And Kumar, one more have... element, uh, you know, that yep. uh, I come across hugely is, uh, and that's from the women out there, is log kya kahenge? You know, that external validation. What will people say if I do it? I may be competent. I may be credible. I may have uh, the skills. I may have the opportunities. But I am the one being my own barrier by saying ki log kya kahenge and looking for that external validation. I think that's a huge hurdle for all of us to cross and if we can cross that is where we lead to what Kavita and uh, Mr. Raman said that uh, you know uh, taking things forward and uh, uh, building on to it but we've got to overcome this barrier of log kya kahenge. Trust you me in the population especially in the, the country that we are in we have enough and more things to be worried about and bothered about and nobody is looking at us it's us who are looking at ourselves and uh, seeking validation all the time. Absolutely. Uma, we have time for one more question. Quick two, three minutes, please. All right. So we have a question from Trina De Odoris, and this adds on to what Mr. Shriga said earlier. So the question is, what can women do to support women rather than pull them down? How can we create uh, an empowering ecosystem for women? You know, um, uh, I'll quickly state one point before the men can take over. Um, you know, in, our, in the training space that I have seen, where I come from, consulting and training space, one is there is a lot of power in the pack, uh, for sure. Um, yeah, women, um, uh, you know, one of the things that we ask women to do is to support a lot of other women, especially in current times, where you can amplify their voice, which is what most women are actually seeking uh, in. Amplify their voice. And the second good thing that I'm seeing uh, that is happening is how women can help other women. Uh, owing to the restrictions of going out and uh, supporting a family to manage that balance, they were not going out a lot earlier. And so all their talent got transformed into hobbies. Now in a virtual scenario, these hobbies have become a great source of business. Look at all the cooking YouTube video stalwarts that we have. People who have turned some of their hobbies into a YouTube sensation, so to say. That's, I think, how we can, not just women helping women, we can help each other, I suppose. Yeah, I'm also going to jump into this because this is something, uh, you know, literally uh, very, very close to the work that we're doing. In fact, I did respond on this particular question, even on LinkedIn, wherein, uh, you know, I, I guided uh, uh, her to go visit our website, which is www.corporate-diva.com is purely because that is the ecosystem that we are been, been doing and making for past over half a decade, nearly close to a decade, wherein women support women, women build each other. We provide a safe space to share your fears, to share your vulnerabilities, yet we give them opportunities to be mentored, to be coached uh, with, with, you know, with our programs that pretty much address to the entire life cycle of women professionals be it them graduating out from B schools and getting them corporate ready, to uh, emerging women leaders, to senior women leaders seeking the next level of coaching and mentoring to take the step forward, to even returning career women and women entrepreneurs. So there, there is this forum out there which is enabling women joining hands together to be each other's champions, to understand where we all come from, we pretty much come from the same space, same same uh, platform, and uh, take take it collectively 
up and uh, forward you know so so there are platforms like that corporate diva proudly is one of those platforms and uh, we're, we're really looking forward to taking that ecosystem forward and getting that whole tribe of women climb up the ladder together, hand in hand. So thank you. I think we are nearly uh, close to the time to finish. Kif, uh, I have to admit it's a fantastic or a great insight. And uh, now with, the, with the time we have, I'm, I'm sure that our participants has gone some great takeaways from this and we will love to hear from you in our comments in any of our posts we did in this event. So I just want to make a statement if I may. Uh, so basically I think that the skills of the women is not uh, above or below a man. It's, it's all about moving forward with complementing each other's skills, get the people involved in the decision making, get women in the drawing rooms and then so make it more proactive and it's been proven as a, so when you have the combination of uh, skills and complementing each other so it's a we can build a great companies great efforts i guess um, on that note uh, Kiran, we will yes, Kiran, a last thing yes. i wanted to just say the greatest leader for all of us is our mother she's the greatest ceo right compassion yeah. passion communication mentoring yes I think it's a bond with all women. So I think uh, definitely they will be a roaring success. I think uh, if you're able to create that kind of ecosystem. So we cannot forget that because, you know, we learn so many things. Be it the leadership, yes. compromise, passion, you know, sacrifices, mentoring, training and execution. So I think uh, it's an inborn quality. So all we need to do is just to get them exposed and provide the right ecosystem. Absolutely. Kiran, in fact, one last input here from my end as well is that, you know, um, the entire discussion of women leadership and uh, all the gender issues that we talk about and speak about, uh, I am personally am a champion of both genders working hand in hand. In isolation, there is not really much that we will be able to achieve. It's got to be a hand in hand journey forward. Uh, and uh, it's it's wonderful to see that both genders are there wanting to champion for each other. They just need ways, avenues or structures forward to, to join hands constructively. So just urging everybody to join hands constructively so that we make it a more neutral world. We make it a more uh, equal opportunity world and uh, have, a, have a pleasant world forward. Uh, so yeah, bye. Thank you very much once again to Deepika uh, for your insights and uh, Parasurama sir, so thank you very much for your insights and Kavita and Vikas. Great to have you all here. And one last point I want to make for the participants is uh, if you have any new ideas for going moving forward for any online events we can deliver, please feel free to let us know, comment or uh, message me in LinkedIn and we would love to take it forward. And apart from that, I think we'll sign off with this. Uh, we have two minutes past uh, scheduled time, but I'm sure that everyone had a great time. Hoping. Thank you very much. Can you have a kind of a snapshot of all the panelists? We can take a. Yes, if everybody can put on the video, we can have yes, a nice screenshot. Right. Yes. Uh, great idea. I think. Let me take when I take.